Hey, what's up, everyone? It's Austin Smith again. And when you see Justin Young on the screen, you know what that means. We're back for another edition of Just a Minute, again, with our editor-in-chief here at HoopScene.com, Justin Young. JY, back at it again for another week. But this time, this week is even more special because it's Bob Gibbons week. JY, as I always ask you, man, how you feeling this week? I'm, I'm elated. I can't wait to get back to Atlanta. I can't wait to be at Swanee Sports Academy and some of our other gyms around the area. Bob Gibbons to me is one of the weeks every year that I cannot wait for. Uh, I've, I've felt this way for 20 years. It's one of my most exciting weeks of every travel basketball season. We didn't have it last year because of the pandemic. It came back with a force in 21. And man, Austin, we've got a field that is unparalleled around the country. Probably the number one event. It is the number one event in the country this weekend. Uh, from top to bottom, it is loaded. And I can't wait to talk to you about it today. Man, it's, it's going to be amazing for sure. And look, you, you, when you talk about an historic event like the Bob Gibbons Tournament of Champions, you think about the lineage, you think about the history, you think about all the games that have come through um, the event. And so with that being said, a lot of people, Jay Wap, really don't, may not know who Bob Gibbons actually is. Man, tell yeah. us a little bit about him and the impact he's had over, man, the past few decades. Yeah, that's a, that's a great question. I'm really glad that you asked that because I think people hear this tournament, the Bob Gibbons Tournament of Champions, not even realizing – who this even is. So, you know, I've got, I've had a long career in the recruiting space. There's a number of guys that have done this. We've seen, um, you know, companies like hoop scene, we're a mixture of an event company and a media company, but then you've got companies like ESPN that's been covering recruiting. Um, but then you scale it back. You got 24 seven, uh, you've got rivals. You used to have scout.com. And then before that you had things like prep stars and you had a guy like Van Coleman, who's a, who's a pioneer in this business. And you go all the way back, and Bob Gibbons was one of the pioneers in this industry. Tom Kachalski, who recently passed away up in New York, is a guy that, that was a really uh, influential person in the scouting game. And a lot of college coaches, you know, Roy Williams and, and Mike Krzyzewski and some of these guys that have been in the business a really long time, have leaned on a guy like Bob Gibbons uh, for recruiting. He's one of the pioneers in the recruiting game. So back in the day, he used to say, hey, listen, I'm going to all these events all up and down the eastern seaboard. Why don't I get teams to come to me? And we'll play this massive, amazing tournament. And, and part of the requirements is you had to be a champion of another tournament in order to get in to this tournament. It was invite only. It was I think it was 32 teams at first, maybe 64. I can't remember. But in its heyday, and, and even now today, the, this iteration of it, it's in its heyday. But the iteration that Bob had when he ran it and his team ran it in North Carolina, it was at University of North Carolina playing at the Dean E. Smith Center. It was at Cameron Indoor at Duke. It was at um, – Reynolds Coliseum at NC State. It was that surrounding gyms in that amazing North Carolina triangle of basketball. And Bob is from Lenore, North Carolina. So he played it in his state. And it was, to me, at the time I was at Rivals during this decade, and I would go up there, it was, it was my favorite event to go to because you're sitting in the Dean E. Smith Center and you're watching like the next wave of guys come through. On a Saturday, every Saturday morning, every year I'd go up, I'd go to Cameron Indoor Stadium and I'd watch games sitting on those wooden bleachers the Cameron Crazies jump up and down on and I'm watching basketball. And I go over to Reynolds Coliseum where Jim Balvano, you know, historically coached his team over there and all the players that come through those programs. It was, it was really, um, it, it, without sounding too emo, it was almost spiritual in a sense of if you're like a real true hoop head, you got to have like this experience that was unlike any other. And then the NCAA came about and they canceled uh, or they, they said you can no longer run um, tournaments on the campuses of colleges. OK, and so when that happened, the, we were able to pick that up and we ended up running the event. And we've been running it now for almost a decade. Maybe this is the, the 10th year, I think, maybe that we've been running it um, down in Atlanta. And so we've been able to have it there. And it started this new wave of teams coming through uh, and this new this new generation of guys that have come through. Let me scale back. I wanted to read something. Can I just, can I do that? Can I read something? Well, yours, brother, go ahead. So I was looking up stuff. And again, I was wondering if people even know who Bob Gibbons is. And I, I found this story that was written in 2009, right before Michael Jordan was being inducted into the uh, basketball hall of fame. Uh, let me just read a couple sentences here. The origin of Michael Jordan's legacy occurred in the mountains of North Carolina in the summer of 1979, nearly four months before he began his junior season of high school basketball. Laney was at a team camp at Appalachian State when Mountaineers coach Bobby Crimmins, who we know is coach at Georgia Tech, phone recruiting analyst Bob Gibbons. He said, there's a kid from Laney that I think will be very special, Gibbons recalled. It was enough for Gibbons to go see him for himself. And after making the short drive from his home in Lenore, North Carolina, he left thinking Jordan was an exceptional athlete. 
There was something special about him that stood out, Bob Gibbons said. Yet Gibbons' perception of Jordan went beyond uh, sheer talent. At the camp, Lanny coach Pop Herring introduced the two, explaining the Gibbons' operator recruiting ratings service and, and was at the camp to evaluate Michael Jordan himself. He said, Mr. Gibbons, what can I do to become a better player? He said, I said, Michael, you need to bring your skill level up and to your athletic level. You're a super athlete. You can jump out of the gym, but you need to work on your shot, ball handling, and all the fundamental skills. I love that because it was really one of the first people that really wrote about Michael Jordan wow. in, this, in the space that we're in. I mean, think about the GOAT, right? right. And so Bob Gibbons, to, to, for people that come to it, like no high school player probably even knows who Bob is. We haven't had him. He's had some health issues. We haven't really seen him that much. But to play on this stage, we talk about this is the most historic stage in grassroots basketball. This is one of the reasons why we want to pay homage back to those forefathers that really set the table for us and why we spend so many weekends together. Um, that's why I think this is a special tournament, and every year it's a special weekend. Um, and I'm just really glad and really honored that we get to host this every single year. Man, as a basketball fan, you've got to love stuff like that, man. And, yeah. and, and to have that event, like have this event, you know, here in the Peach State, man, is pretty fantastic. Well, Jay Wild, man, you know, to get things started off, you always want to get the tournament going on day one, right? Yeah. Right. And so on Friday night, we're hitting it hard with some heavy hitting matchup games. What teams, man, who has really has a chance to be legendary on day one of this year's Bob Gibbons tournament? Awesome. Challenge? Friday night is full of bangers, man. It's just every court you're going to be looking at is just going to have a matchup in every division. And so what we've done is that in years past, this has always been going back to what we did with Bob Gibbons' original tournaments. It was a tournament right out of the gate. Mm. So what happened a lot of times is on Friday night, if you lost your first game, it was actually probably a difficult weekend for you because now you're on the left side of the bracket. So we want to pivot some, pivot some things around. And we want to create opportunities for teams to have some elite matchups. I mean, elite matchups across the board to give them a chance to start out the weekend with some fire okay that won't affect them in bracket play and so we've not done this before this year that we're doing it i really like that we're doing that because we can really set the energy levels and bob gibbons has to have energy levels across the board and i think we've got that with friday night for sure so these matchup games are going to be really important every literally every court you come to if you're a fan you know we've real still we're still having some limitations as far as they're you know we, we like to have a smaller crowd but if you're really looking for some big time action do yourself a favor maybe pick up a ticket come over to swine sports academy go over infinite energy arena we've got a lot of high schools up in uh, Forsyth county that we're using some of rec centers as well go out and watch these games these are some big time matchups really some of the best matchups that you'll see in grassroots basketball all season long wow man that's gonna be it right there i mean jay while well, i'm looking at you got florida pro you got some of the some of the hsa teams going yeah. to get some of the least secret teams man let's dive into that for a quick second let's look at the, those teams real quick yeah i thought ty young and daniel pacioni did a tremendous job with our pairings and our matchups uh i i picked three games i mean there's there's 35 games that you can go watch that are gonna be really really good i wanted to take a look at our, our top teams that we have in the hoop scene association i want to see them play some of the best teams so two of the best teams i've seen all season long all season long. When we were in Kentucky and we're at the grassroots showcase and I'm watching JL3 and I'm watching Florida Pro, I'm like, they have to play each other at Bob right. Gibbons. Right. That, whether it's a title game or whatever the case may be, we decided to go ahead and put that game right on Friday night. It's going to be our nightcap game at Friday at Swanee Sports Academy. Florida Pro is undefeated, I think, this season, if I'm not if I'm not mistaken. They haven't lost. They went out to Kansas City last weekend, went 4-0 out there. Every single weekend, 4-0, 4-0, 4-0, 4-0. They're doing everything, man. They're doing everything. And to me, Top to bottom, the team that I've seen, and I haven't seen everybody, but JL3 out of Texas, a Nike UOBL team, they have a seven-footer. They've got six, five point guards. They've got a, a, they've got a point guard that, that's going to be a guy that's a 10 assist guy. You've got athletes. You've got three-point shooters. Pound for pound, I think we've got one of the deepest teams in the country in JL3 out of the Nike circuit, playing the number one independent team. And I would argue, I would argue, that you could say Florida Pro is probably a top five team in the country, regardless of, of uh, affiliation, okay? You're putting those two teams together right out of the gate. That's what we're talking about with Bob Gibbons Tournament Champions. That's the type of stage that we want to have for players to leave this weekend being legendary and being part of this lineage of players that have played over this event over the last 40 years. That's the type of stuff that we want to get into on Friday night. So can the Thompson Twins, okay, can the Hendricks Twins and Florida Pro – Keep it up against a team like JL3. Um, I, I cannot wait. I'll be there for that one. We'll have tons of coverage. I know you'll be there for that. We've got video cameras everywhere for that. Uh, that's going to be a monster, monster game. 
man, absolutely. And real quick, everyone, we want to make sure we mention this now before we forget. Hey, if you're there at Bob Gibbons this weekend at that whole historic event, make sure you take video, take pictures, and hashtag Gibbons on all yeah. the social media platforms. Do that, man. We want to engage with you all. We want to see what you all see from your lens um, right there when you get at CSS One Sports Academy. Jay, well, that's crazy, man. I mean, you even talked about we talked about team space. You know, we talked about yeah. you know, CP25. There's so many matchups, man, that are going to be amazing. And yeah. Team Spates, also one of our top independent teams, one of the top independent teams in the country. Jamar Franklin, I think, is the hottest mid-major prospect there is in the nation. I've talked to so many schools about him this past week, last two weeks, really. Uh, we've got them paired up with the Gibbons OG team and the Upward Stars. Yep. Probably one of the premier programs in the Adidas circuit. Our guy, Curtis Wheeler, has done a tremendous job with his program up there in the uh, upstate area in, in Spartanburg and Columbia. And they're pulling all the top players from the state of South Carolina. I can't wait for this one. It's going to be a tremendous matchup. Um, some really, really good guard play. Uh, we saw the, we saw upward stars at our tip off event. Okay. We had some really, really good matchups with those guys. I can't wait to see what they do against Spates. And I can't wait to see what Spates does against uh, a team from the Adidas circuit. So again, tremendous pairing for a hoop scene association team. We did that up in, in Kentucky with our grassroots showcase. They had tremendous, tremendous success. This is another one on Friday night that I'll be paying really close attention to at the Bob Gibbons Tournament Champions. Okay, well, I know you see you had a third one too, man, and I want to go ahead and throw it out there so everybody can get ready. CP25, Alabama, Mississippi, and then the home team, Game Elite 3 SSSB. Man, let's talk about it, JY. Yeah, CP25, Alabama, Mississippi, man, they want the smoke, right? That's what the kids say. They want the smoke. And they've been doing it all season long. And every event, we've talked about it every single, every single week we do just a minute. They get better and better every single week. And they've got a tremendous matchup that they're going to have paired up with Game Elite featuring Scoot Henderson, who I think is probably the most viral guy in the whole tournament. Everybody wants to see Scoot in action. Yeah. And Jabori McGee, I think this is a premier opportunity for him to prove what we've already seen this season. Can he be an elite defender at the collegiate level? What a matchup. I'm sure he'll get caught on some switches. I'm sure he'll be matched up with them one-on-one. Of course, Game Elite is just not Scoot, man. They are stacked as they always are. And Game Elite, they've been with us since Jalen Brown was playing with them. They've been with us when they were worldwide renegades playing the Bob Gibbons Tournament Champions. So they are an OG program to this. And, man, we can't wait to have them. Again, another Friday night game. And I think, Austin, honestly, like pull up the Hoopsian app on your phone. Anybody can find a game that's going to be worth going to. There's so many games. If you can't get there in person, totally understand. Make sure you watch on Be the Beast. There are so many matchups, particularly on Friday night in our matchup games, that you will not be disappointed. I'll be going back when I get back to Arizona, and I'll be watching film from these Friday night games because I can't be everywhere at one time. But so many games, but a huge opportunity. Those are just three of the matchups that I'm excited about. Uh, I, I think our HSA teams have some stuff up their sleeve, and they're going to really put some of these guys up on the ropes that are playing with the shoe company teams. Man, JY, look, you know, an historic event is going to continue to be more historic this weekend for sure, man. And guys out there are going to yeah. have their opportunity to become legendary. JY, you talked about it earlier, and we want to make sure everyone um, who's watching today gets a better feel for this too. You know, typically we haven't been doing bracket style as much this year with our events, but we're yeah. doing bracket style for the Bob Gibbons this weekend. Talk to us a little bit more in detail about why bracket style again for this historic event. Well, why do we love March Madness? Why do we love it? Because right? you got the best, the best team win. You like lose and you go home. Yeah. I mean, we don't get to that point yet, but but you have to win. And, and for us, I love showcase games. I really do. I think they're important. But I don't know if sometimes you come with all of the energy and all the competition and all the fire that you have inside of you as an athlete. And to me, from an evaluation standpoint, and I think from a narrative too, to be the champion of something like the Bob Gibbons Tournament Champions, that says something. And so if you look at a lot of our teams, and we try to seed the tournament this way based on what your record was based on what you've won, who you've beaten. Like we, we've got our own official RPI, if you will. Mm -hmm. We're really measuring that out. Bracket style to me is the differential for so many things. We're like, okay, is this player better or is this player better? Is this team better or is this team better? And to me, if you win a Bob Gibbons Tournament Champions bracket, that is a stamp of approval that has very little parallel in grassroots basketball. And so bracket style brings everything out. If you really want to see some of the best of travel basketball, and it has this negative connotation, it's not great basketball, and it's blah, blah, it's junk. That is absolute crap. If you want to come see elite basketball, spend Saturday evening all the way to late Sunday afternoon. You'll see some of the best games you're going to see in travel basketball where guys are competing, coaches are coaching, energy levels are off the charts. 
it is elite basketball. It really truly is. And that's why we do it. And the energy level, like I've, I've been posting a lot of videos on our hoop scene, Twitter feed from different tournaments that we've had over the years, even going back to the North Carolina days. And you'll see, and you'll feel a lot of these energies and those happened on Saturday night. Those happen on, on Sunday morning, Saturday night. I'm not kidding. You. Saturday night at Bob Gibbons is my favorite Saturday night of the season. And that's not a hyperbole for this. That is a true honest to goodness statement. Saturday night at Bob Gibbons is some of the best competition you're going to see. Yeah, I mean, it is. It is, it is you, man. I feel like Bruce Buffer, like at a UFC fight, like trying to get everybody <laughs> hype, you know? <laughs> Man, look, it, it, Jay Wild. I think we, we're starting to hype train for everybody now because it's real. Like it, yeah. it, it's, these yeah. games are going to be off the chain. Uh, and like you said too, Justin. I mean, you talked about our younger age groups; those are yeah. going to be loaded, loaded as well. I mean, we've got the Infinite Energy Center. So again, yeah. top notch facilities. Man, you want to touch on that a bit with those younger? Teams? I do. Yeah. So our guy Josh Tech will be over there on on Friday night. I think we'll have a number of us. I think I'm going to go over there. I think Justin Byerly is going to go over there. We may even mix in our Florida guy Jerome Reed going over there. I think a lot of us may go over there on on throughout the course of the weekend over the Infinite Energy Center. We have six courts posted up over there. It's right off the highway. It's going to be a beautiful setup. If you've not played over there, we've ran, I think we've ran three or four different events over there over the years. Um, you know, we set up our courts over there. It's a tremendous situation over there to get over and 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 everything's super close. Uh, but historically, let me go back to the old days of Bob Gibbons. Okay, so Saturday, what I would do is I, I was really watching at a real serious national level. Gibbons was one of the premier events, probably one of the top two events of the season. And so, so many things mattered for us. It was the end of the spring, okay? And I still treat it the same way. But on Saturday, or I'm sorry, Sunday morning at the Dean e. Smith Center were the 15 and 16 new brackets that started the day. So it was, I think it was 8 o'clock and 9.15 or something like that. Some of the best opportunities I've ever had to see the best players in the nation, okay? We're, we're on Sunday morning in this bracket. And I've always wanted to make sure that I paid homage to that with our coverage at Hoop Scene. Some of the best games we've ever had are underclassmen games. I mean, listen to this lineage of guys that have come through. A kid named John Morant played the Bob Gibbons Tournament Champions in underclassmen division. Zion Williamson, okay, was like a 6'3", like point forward, 13-year-old for the South Carolina Hornets was there. A young, super even skinnier kid named Brandon Ingram was a 15U kid that played at Bob Gibbons Tournament of Champions. I'll never forget when Jonathan Isaac blew up at the Bob Gibbons Tournament of Champions. So these all happen in our underclassmen divisions where really the first chapter of stories of young elite prospects happens here. And I can't wait. We're going to have big time coverage from that, from those younger divisions, um, not just an infant energy, energy arena. Uh, I was talking to Andre Whitehead, our Tennessee editor. He's like, hey, man, there's this team from Tennessee of 15U. I got to see him. Uh, so we're going to be going offside and chasing these down. But what an unbelievable opportunity for young players. And I think because we've talked about this before, the recruiting calendar is really centrally focused on the seniors, that this is a really big weekend, I think, for underclassmen to get a lot of buzz as we go into July to kind of start this narrative and to start like a real serious recruitment. Um, super key weekend for those young guys. And we're going to have that covered big time this weekend at Bob Gibbons. Yes, sir. Absolutely, J.Y. Looking forward to seeing some of the young guys compete in action as well. Hey, this is also a huge rankings weekend, J.Y. Yeah. It's a big buzz weekend because, again, whenever you get the best of the best competing, it's an opportunity almost like we talked about before in past episodes to see apples to apples. Yeah. You know, we've been talking about that for a minute, man. What's your take on this weekend being a huge kind of rankings weekend? Yeah, so I get this a lot. Like college coaches, I see it all the time in their press conferences and and different things. They just like, they trash rankings. It's BS. Cause every single time I talk to a coach, it's like, Hey, basically let's talk <laughs> rankings. Okay. They care about it. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so they try to act like it's not, and I understand why they want to control narrative and help people understand it really doesn't matter. And I actually believe that, that they don't, but when there comes to a pecking order of players, coaches want to know like who are the best guys. Okay. And so that comes with that. And so for me, we've already had a pretty good season. We had a great sample size. Okay. I mean, I've got report after report after report that I've been writing this spring, and now I'm like really curious, right? So who is the top five point guards in Georgia, okay? Who are the top 2023 20, guys in the state of Alabama? Who are the 24 class guys in the state of North Carolina that we want to rise up? In Florida, because of the depth of talent, there's so many guys that maybe I not got it wrong on this player that we've got to move him up from like 17 and put him at number nine, okay? These are, this is a huge weekend for us. And for our for our scouting team that we get into this type of stuff um, and we, we adjust our state rankings, our national rankings, some of the all-American teams that I really that I'm associated with 
are massive weekends for me to have like a body of work to really look at this kind of stuff. Um, and so like, this is a major event. This is one of probably one of the three events a year where when I'm flying home, I've got my trusty notebook out and I'm writing down all American lists. I'm writing down move to five star. I'm writing down all state contender in the state of Georgia. So yeah, this is a huge momentum weekend. And again, it goes back to that style of competition. And also I think we have to lend if you like think about think about a player in college, you may have just an okay season, but if you get it done in March in the bracket, you're a legend. You're a legend. I think I think Bob Gibbons and lends into that. And again, that has a lot to do with our rankings and a lot of the buzz too, which ultimately as now that we know July has some recruiting opportunities coming about, what a huge, huge, huge weekend it is to create great film, to get great buzz and put yourself on a list that maybe you might be on a list on the middle of the pack. But now a college coach says, you know what? I need to send my head coach to see this dude on July 8th. So that's something that's something you got to keep in mind too. Yeah, no doubt. Without a doubt about it, man. I mean, talk about platforms. This is one of the biggest and it's a great way yeah. to kind of push their recruitment heading to those live periods in July. Well, yeah. again, everyone, hey, we want you all to be social at this historic event this weekend. Hey, this is your opportunity to be legendary. You can get and catch in on all the action from the use of your smartphone. So again, man, take plenty of videos, take some cameras. Hey, if you if you see me, come take a selfie or something. I don't lie, man. And just hashtag Gibbons this weekend because we want to see all the content from your lens and we want to interact with everyone and make this event, the historic event, it definitely is. Jay, well, I'm excited, brother. I, I'm I, too. I'm too. So much to do. Like getting ready for Bob Gibbons is a ton of work and it's worth it though. I mean, there's so many games, there's so many players to cover. I, I'm excited. I'm excited to see you. I'm excited to see the team. Excited to see all the teams coming out from all over the place. we got teams coming from all parts of the country this weekend. Can't wait. Man, hashtag Gibbons. Put, put, put some respect on it, JY. Let's go. <laughs> Let's do it. Well, hey, everyone, thanks for tuning in to another awesome episode of Just a Minute. Hey, I'm Austin Smith, your Hoop Scene host. And as always, I was joined by the man with the plan, our editor-in-chief here at HoopScene.com, Mr. Justin Young. JY, thanks for your time, brother. Thanks, Austin. Awesome.